Sound design. Yeah. All right, so what is the difference between a gradient and an infire array? That's what I want to look at in today's video because recently I did an interview with Raj Mogail um, from Void Acoustics. He's the inventor of the delta array. And during the interview, he mentioned that the gradient and the delta are very similar. And so I started thinking, okay, well, I wonder how different they really are. So here in map 3D, I set up a delta array and here is my gradient array. So exact same boxes, almost the exact same line length. The only difference is that in the delta, the rear facing boxes are pushed back so that um, the backs of the speakers are lined up. Oh, and I forgot to say that, that this is what I'd like to look at in the video today. Um, let's look at the coverage shape, the forward aspect ratio, the shape over frequency, and the frequency response. So coverage shape, let's just do a quick preview, 63 hertz. Here is the delta, okay? And here is the gradient. Pretty similar. Um, you may have noticed right away that um, the delta is a little bit wider. Um, so let's see exactly how wide. So let's look at the forward aspect ratio. And I could draw out a line and then try to find the coverage angle here and then calculate the forward aspect ratio. But since we know that the forward aspect ratio is simply um, a number, a multiplier, to show us depth over width, it's pretty easy here to just measure the depth and width since I already have this prediction here. So with this drawing tool, I can actually just put a point in uh, for the depth and a point in for the width. And I already did that for both of these and I found that um, for the delta array, the depth was 26 meters and the width was 13 times two or 26. Um, so that's pretty helpful. So 26 by 26, so the delta array has a forward aspect ratio of one and the gradient then, and that gave me a forward aspect ratio of 1.14. So keep in mind that these are for a six element inverted gradient stack and a six element delta, okay? So very specific conditions here. So they are very close to each other, this very small change. And now with this forward aspect ratio number in hand, this allows us to do some quick calculations in the field. So if we were to pretend that uh, this fake audience here, that this was all the back and this, the audience was actually here in the front, we say, hey, we have this audience that is 30 meters depth. We know it's gonna stop here. How, how wide can we play with each of these arrays? Well, then we just need to divide the depth by our forward aspect ratio and see that, well, it's a one for the delta. So we know it's already gonna be 30. We get slightly less width with the gradient because it has a slightly more narrow shape, right? So, and it could potentially play a little bit farther. Um, and then we could look at that. So if we're looking at the gradient right now, that's 26.39. So I can come over here, grab my audience, change this to 26.39. And now with the gradient, it fills this shape perfectly. And if we switch over to the delta, then we would change this to 30. So now we have a 30 by 30 audience square here. And the delta should fill this perfectly. Now keep, now, uh, I guess another caveat to this is that I'm not really doing the forward aspect ratio correctly. If you really want to measure opening angle, my understanding is that um, you should measure it at its most narrow where you will use it. So that's the next thing we should look at. So I made this video where I measured both arrays over frequency. So you can see as frequency goes up, both arrays get more and more narrow. Um, the only thing I can point out here is they seem to get narrow at about the same rate. They seem to change at about the same rate. And then once we get to this highest frequency that I measured, 125 hertz, we have these side lobes that, that we probably don't want with a delta array. So it's just good to keep in mind. Um, we might not want to use the delta array up that high. We might want to put some filters, something like that.
And so a better measurement of forward aspect ratio would probably be to, um, you know, look at the frequency response and then say, okay, here's the operating range of this array. And so we decide that it stops at this frequency and therefore we need to look at the coverage angle and the forward aspect ratio at that frequency. So just for this video and just comparing these two arrays, I decided to look at the, the center of their operating range instead of the top end where you would normally want to look. So at 63 hertz, this is how these two guys compare. Okay, and um, so I think we've done all the things. The last thing was just looking at the frequency response. So over here, I have that loaded already. So let's look at amplitude. Let's zoom into the low end. And what we can see here is that in red and brown, we have the delta array front and rear, red and brown. And since we have 80, 90, 100, 10 dB per division, we can see that between red and brown, we have a nice 20 dB front to back ratio with this array. And then in teal and pink, we have the gradient combined front and rear. Teal and pink. So maybe about 14 or 15 dB front to back ratio here. So the first comparison I'm noticing is that the delta array gives us a better front to back ratio, 20 dB. And the gradient has a reduced front to back ratio of about maybe 14 to 15. Um, the next thing I'm noticing is that we get overall more summation. So this teal color is the gradient array in the front. This red color is the gradient array. So this teal color is the gradient array in the front. This red color is the delta array in the front. And you can see that we are getting about four or five more dB of summation in the front from the gradient array. So if that's the most important thing to you, that might be the array that you wanna go with if you're trying to decide between these two. Um, we also have just ex an expanded, slightly expanded operating range. You can see that this teal color goes out a little bit farther. And with the delta array, this red color, we see it start to slope down a little bit sooner here. All right, so those are some of the differences that I noticed between the delta and the gradient array. Um, let me know if I missed anything. And let me know if you use this in the field. I'd be curious to see your results. All right, thanks. Sound design. Yeah.